Hello, denizens. Your former network executive reaction here. The hullabaloo surrounding the video game Hogwarts Legacy is either a microcosm of what is wrong with society or it's the inflection point of idiocy, the apex of asinineness from which things will start settling down. I, I don't know. I can't predict the future. I sure hope so because the manufactured controversy around this game is the height of lunacy. Come to think of it, aren't all online controversies just manufactured contretemps? Let's take a look at what we have here and maybe someone else with extra letters after their name can further elaborate with appropriate word salad to make sense of it all. At its core, this is the ongoing toxic war between biological fact versus hurt feelings and vested interests. Always follow the money. It all started when some idiot opened a portal between the real world and the alternate universe of colleges and universities that let diversity, inclusivity, equity, tenured queer theory zombies into our world of businesses and government, school boards, etc. One of the most notable foot soldiers caught up in all of this was, of course, J.K. Rowling. Ironically, one of the best recruits the left has ever had, until she transgressed the unwritten law that men who dress up like women are still men. This biological fact enraged TRAs, trans rights activists specifically, as well as people who have not only sided with the TRAs, but have made it a personal crusade that includes online harassment, doxing, threats of violence, and career ruination. Yes, you. You people who believe you are the good guys. Sorry, good thems. The latest battleground involves Hogwarts Legacy, a video game. Yes. This is how far humanity has fallen. I'm fairly certain it is isolated in the self-destructing English-speaking world, but concentrated in the United States of America, the global crucible of new ideas, both good and bad. But let's get back to Hogwarts Legacy. It's not news that a noisy faction has been demanding that all right-thinking people not purchase the game because it's tainted by JKR's alleged comments. Let me repeat. The insanity surrounding JKR for the past several years is predicated on lies, mischaracterizations, and hidden agendas. It's promoted by a tiny core group that has consumed way too much of our time, including my time right now. So let me outline the factual framework that we have here. I'm basing it on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but I'm, I'm calling it Chato's hierarchy of stupidity. Also in my case, I invert Maslow's pyramid. Those of you who have been sucked into the vortex of JKR derangement syndrome, please listen. I will give you the building blocks to take back your life. I say that sincerely. I'm not trying to change the minds of the enablers because they have an agenda, often a financial one. They are not your friends. They don't care about you. You are not fighting the fight for a greater good. You are being used. Back to my thesis, JKR and her supporters are being vilified by a noisy subset of the trans community whose activists are an even smaller subset of the please just leave us alone trans community, supported primarily by guilty middle-class white people, mostly women, as a way to display their virtue signaling curriculum vitae. And the punchline is, that everything you are rallying around is provably wrong. JKR is not transphobic, what, whatever that means. It's a convenient word because it can mean anything anybody wants. There are four camps in this anti-JK rolling trans debate, notwithstanding the fact that she didn't even work <laughs> on the damn game. The people who have it 
thoroughly wrong, but don't have the wherewithal to sort out the truth. The people who know the truth, but are cowed, lest they be excommunicated by their cult of social justice brown shirts. The people who are making money off this and the narcissistic trans activists themselves. Look, I'm not without compassion. An acquaintance who transitioned late in life contacted me in tears one day when a three-year-old kid in a store went up to her and said, Hey, mister. I listened to her because I cared. It would not have been helpful to tell her that she really did look like a guy in drag. However, I don't understand the ugly, prancing ponies embalmed in rouge and mascara who scream on their TikTok videos that they are better than women. Can I suggest that that argument is not helpful to your cause? Curiously, the female-bodied men are extremely quiet on this front. Back to Hogwarts legacy, I'm constantly asking myself the question, why? We all know about the toxic enabling mechanism of social media, but it is a lightning rod because an organization has decided to make it a cause celeb. Most of you commenting are probably not even using your own words because you're incapable of independent thought. And I will briefly add, this also goes for those who have used this to express their homophobia. But the anti-Hogwarts peeps have only themselves to blame for that. Recently, someone found a way to make lists of people streaming Hogwarts Legacy so they could be more easily found and harassed. Now, the harassment part was bad enough, but it's the list part that should frighten all of you. Historically, regimes that put people on lists were not the good guys. Paranoid leaders and people make lists, my relatives in Hungary were on a list during that World War II thing I, I think you've heard of. It did not go well for most of them. The Soviets loved putting people on lists. If the people you are supporting are making lists, you need to rethink your priorities. Ironically, all this noise has caused the exact opposite reaction the woke Waffen wanted. The game is a thousand times more popular than it would have been otherwise. But to me, that is cold comfort. Till next time, denizens. Be seeing you.